If you love talking about cats, but your friends and family are kind of over it, this is the podcast for you. Join your hosts, Danielle Stray Woolley and Elizabeth Calico Gearhart on the Jersey Podcasts, where everyday cat lovers share funny stories, challenging situations, and ask their questions about cats. All right, let's get right into this episode. Hi, everybody. I'm Danielle Woolley. And I'm Elizabeth Gerhart, and we are the, the Jersey, Jersey Podcast. Podcast. Yay! <laughs> um, we are so excited to have Mitch Bernard here with us today. She helps people find lost animals. And, you know, my cats do go outside, and I did have one get lost when we were moving, but he came back. Had another one get lost who was chipped, but uh, I wish I'd known her then because it caused me a lot of stress and worry. So welcome, mm -hmm. Mitch. Thank welcome, you. Mitch. Thank you. I love the podcast. I'm so excited to be here. I love to talk about this subject. So how do you want to start? Well, um, let's go through a case. Like I, I'm going to call you, Mitch, and say uh, my cat, I let him out, but for some reason they didn't come home for the last two days. What am I going to do? Well, let's be realistic. What's really going to happen is, oh my God, Mitch, right now. Okay. <laughs> and you'll post on Facebook on like 10 different groups and next door and whatever your other local social media platforms are, which is great because it really, the first prong of any case is going to be, um, as the military would say, multiplying your forces, getting more eyes looking for your pet than just yours. So that anybody who might encounter your pet is going to see uh, is going to know that they are missing and that they are missed. Like they weren't dumped. Um, they're not just a regular outdoor cat, which unfortunately is a really tough, like, especially with um, common color patterns, like orange tabbies in some neighborhoods, there's just right. tons of them. So you want them to know not every orange tabby you see might be, you know, just a community cat. It's my pet. And I want you to take a look. So that's your first thing. And probably that's where I'm going to encounter you. Someone's going to see your plea and they're going to contact me or someone like me, tag me in the post and ask for help. So you already answered one of my first questions, which would be, does your cat normally have outdoor access? Um, we ask a few questions about the cat itself because the cat, the owner, the um, spotter and or the finder, if those are different people, all of their behaviors as well as the environment and the circumstances of them going missing. Those are all factors that are gonna play into how successful you are in recovering your pet. So the fact that your pet normally has outdoor access expands our radius. Uh, an indoor only cat, particularly one that's maybe a little shy or reticent about people coming over, um, that cat is likely to hide on the property or very close, like within just a few houses away, three to five houses is what we use, usually say. And so that's where someone who owns a cat like that is going to concentrate their flyering, which we'll talk about in a sec, um, their canvassing, their posters, those kinds of things. But because your cat normally has outdoor access, it has a territory and it has a comfort level with being outside. So even though we still consider it displaced, it's still um, because it's, you know, it can't get back in the house or whatever. Um, we still consider it displaced, but it's more comfortable outside than an indoor only cat is likely to be. If I may, something yeah. you just said, I just went, oh, wow, that makes sense in my head. Sometimes hearing stuff from other people is what we need to hear. Sure. Um, one of my cats was originally an outdoor cat mm -hmm. that we took in and it's not allowed outside anymore. Mm -hmm. And the very first time that it got out, it just did like a quick dash around yeah. the yard and kind of came back. But then mm -hmm. the next time it went to the neighbor's driveway and then the next yeah. time it went to the corner. So right. It's getting more and more adventurous as it gets more comfortable. Exactly. And the more experiences they have, especially curious cats and confident cats, um, the more experiences they have that are positive and not scary outside, the farther they're likely to explore. Um, and of course, it depends a lot on the environment. If it's a city neighborhood versus a more rural neighborhood, um, if you back up onto woods versus just in the suburbs or something, all those kinds of things come into play. And of course, predators do come into play. A lot of times what happens with outdoor cats is they've got their territory they're very comfortable in. Even if the, you know, I hear a lot from people, my cat goes outside every day, but he just stays in our yard. Okay. Um, until the first time it doesn't, mm -hmm. until a dog or 
predator scares it away until construction next door frightens it to, into hiding a little farther. Every animal is going to have, as you know, a certain distance that it feels comfortable with for certain noises, for different people, for crowds, for dogs, other animals. And the closer that other thing is, the more distance it wants to put between itself and that other thing. Or even so, smells too, right? Exactly. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, a uh, chemical, a gas leak next door, all kinds of things can make animals d behave differently and seek different territory. And one of the things actually that's very important to get out that is very counterintuitive, and so it's important that we make sure owners know this, is do not go calling your pet or send out a search party for your pet. A lot of times people think like missing people, they want to go and do like a grid search where everybody is like arm to arm length and they're searching. That's great for some animals. It's great for, for instance, a displaced bird, but for cats and dogs, it's very bad because what most of those animals will do is again, they want to put a, keep a certain amount of distance between themselves and a crowd or a stranger. Mm -hmm. So if your cat is wary around strangers, especially, they're just going to put more and more distance, go hiding farther and farther away. And that not only sends them farther and makes your search radius grow, it makes it difficult to pin down where they are for the next step. And it uh, can send them into danger. So especially in areas where there are interstates or other highways around, you really want to keep an animal as close to where it started being as possible, because the more it's on the move, the harder it is to trap them, which is the next step, uh, but also the harder it is to keep them out of danger. And the harder it is for them to find their way back home too. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Now, one thing that's good about an outdoor cat is it normally doesn't have trouble finding its way home. So one of the things you hear a lot in, um, you see a lot of Facebook posts, comments, people will paste a little something about, put your litter box outside. I'm waiting for you as a sit talk about <laughs> this because I don't know why it irks me when I see it that. Is. Like what part of that works? And if I'm wrong, fine, but I, I don't see You're how not that would work. Okay. Um, I mean, there's there are people who believe in it wholeheartedly who say, that's why my cat came home. How do you know that's why your cat came home? How do you know it wasn't the other dozen things that you and other people did or the cat just made its way? What we know is that in most cases, it isn't that an animal can't figure out where home is. So it's not, mm -hmm. you know, increasing that. Most of the time they, there's a finite amount of energy and time for the owner to locate the pet with greater success. So you, the most success you have is right away. And within the first couple of days, if an animal is in hiding, they will um, likely take three to seven days before they will get hungry enough to come out of hiding for the hunger to overcome their fear of whatever they're hiding from and look for food. So after that three to seven day hump, you have more success with enticing them, um, feeding stations, we're gonna get into cameras and things like that. So the finite amount of energy that you have if you spend any of it doing anything that's not known to be evidence-based, proven result giving, you're wasting that time and energy on something that you could be doing one of the other things that also can take some energy. So my advice and the people I know who do this work, who've been through the training I've been through, agree that putting out the litter box is at best a waste of time. At worst, it can attract other animals Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes predators that's, you know, the evidence is not super strong in either direction on whether, because the counter to that comment is often, oh no, it's going to bring coyotes. Uh, that's debatable. And there's also single or individual behaviors within species. So in some coyote areas, there's no danger of predation on cats. Most of the interaction between coyotes and cats, for instance, is just chasing. It's not mm -hmm. catching and eating. But every once in a while, there's an individual who learned from its mom that cats are prey, and so they hunt them. So that's debatable about the 
Okay. Well, I have to tell you my story if I can. Please with, do. With I'm sorry, Mercutio. I got so. No, this no, is good. No, we like, no, don't want to interrupt. Is, and I, I know I because this is so important because people don't know what to do. Yes. But so Mercutio, if anybody's watching this on YouTube, he's on the wall. His picture is on the wall behind me. He's dressed. Um, he's the grand white cat, kind of dressed like little Lord Fauntleroy. Mm, he's pretty. And yeah, thanks. So he's my baby. So I got him. I think he was eight months old. He'd spent four months in a cage at a kill shelter after spending, mm. after being found in a dumpster behind a Best Buy. Mm. And I love that cat. And anyways, we ha- were moving a couple of times. And the first time we moved, he stuck around. The second time we moved, after a few days, he was like, I'm out of here. And we were trying to keep him in the house at that point mm-hmm. because we had just moved. It only been a couple of days. I'm like, we're not yeah. letting him outside for a while. Anyway... I looked all over for him. I called him. Um, this was a long, this was a while ago. I didn't have a lot of social media next door. Didn't mm-hmm. was didn't exist. Like this right. was before there was so much communication, but I, he never came home and I was thinking, well, when we moved for the last and final time back into our house, we were having work done. Then um, I'll get another cat probably because at that point I had two cats. I like to have three and one cat was checkers. Who's also on the wall behind me in the general's uniform, who was really mean to the other cats and ruled with an iron roost. I mean, ruled the roost with an iron fist. Yeah. And she um, was probably part of the reason he didn't want to live in this little house with, with us. But anyway, so that was in the spring, I think. And then Thanksgiving, my son came home from college to this little house we were renting and my husband and my son were cleaning up the backyard and my son said to me mom there's kushi it had been seven months yeah i said oh come on quit pulling my leg that's really mean it's like no i'm serious he's here he was starving so all i can figure is he was probably really close by Mm -hmm. but he somebody else was feeding him outside could be or he and might have been joining some community cats that already were being fed. That happened sometimes. Right. And then for whoever was feeding him went away for the holiday is what I think. Yeah. And that so could be. it was Thanksgiving weekend. And so he didn't have any food Thanksgiving weekend because when he came home, he ate like three little things, a fancy feast in like two minutes. <laughs> and so, um, but he's never run away since. So then okay. we moved back to our house mm-hmm. and, um, he's just my little love. Like I yeah. woke up during the night last night and he was curled up in my arm and he's 12 now. He was a lot younger than, but um, I don't think that cats come back after that long a time very often. Do they? You'd be surprised. Really? I mean, it really depends on the cat and the person, the human animal bond between those two, uh, the neighborhood, all of those kinds of factors. But yeah, a lot of times cats will find other existing communities uh, community cat groups to feed with if the and a lot of times those um, I had a case a couple of years ago where the cat got lost uh, was displaced jumped out of a house sitter's uh, a pet sitter's uh, apartment window strange neighborhood 20 minutes from home and it happened that an adjacent neighborhood he he ran to that this neighborhood because the place where the apartment was was extremely unfriendly to a cat in the winter time it was just no brush cover no prey no no anything so he very smartly made his way to an adjacent neighborhood where literally every house in the neighborhood had cats it fed outside oh. like not just its own pets and fortunately we were able to work with a neighbor who finally caught him on camera but yeah i mean it just depends on what they find and you know, that the hard part for the owner is it does become a marathon because you cannot sustain the level of emotional and physical energy and time that you put in, in those initial days and weeks, you can't sustain that for seven months or two years or whatever. So everyone has to make a decision at a certain point. If your cat isn't home in six weeks or whatever your time frame is that you can devote depending on your job and your kids and your family situation, you have to make a decision. You know, it's okay for me to not make this the only thing I do with my free time. I have a life to live and I'm going to, you know, do the best I can with what I have, but everybody gets to a point where they have to just 
decide like you did, you know, I'm not going to actively search or I'm going to actively search for two hours every Saturday or whatever. You have to be willing to adapt your plan because that's some good mental advice there. It's really because important. my world would just end like, I, I yeah. know I'm joking, but like, no. you know, I could see myself throwing my all into it and, yeah. and having a plan and being okay with that plan, you know, yep. as long as you're still trying. And you had mentioned before too, like don't have people chasing after the right. lost pet. So I'm I'm guessing that the best, better approach would be to have someone take a picture or share a footage Definitely. Or a video. Right. You can so, get it exactly pinpointed and not, hey, I think I saw your cat two blocks to the left here. Right. So what we advise is that you initially do a very thorough search have someone do a very thorough search inside your house because cats can get mm-hmm. themselves locked in, as I'm sure you're aware. We had very surprising tiny places mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, behind cabinets and dishwashers you didn't even know had openings. You also ask your neighbors whether you can search their property. Ask whether you can do it because you will do a more thorough job than your neighbor will. And if your neighbor finds it, it might take off. Whereas if you find it, you have a better chance of enticing it. And we're going to talk, I hope that we have time to talk about all these. We're going to talk about these things, but yeah, you do want to make sure that uh, you do some level of search to make sure it's not just in an obvious place. Or if someone had a garage door open before, yes. something we've told people yeah. before, or yes, a shed absolutely. and they didn't even think of it, they snuck yeah. in. Yep. Yeah, cars, in trunks. between fences, if mm-hmm. there's fences back to back, I've heard of there are yeah. so many places. There. Yep. Um, and so then that's when we're talking about the next phase is, uh, and at this, you ideally want to be doing this the same day you realize it's missing or the day, the next morning or something. You want to get a flyer with a color photo and a contact number into the hands of every person you can think of in that neighborhood. Every residence, every business, every church, nonprofit, whatever, every building but also delivery drivers, utility workers, contractors, landscapers, um, anyone you can think of who goes through the neighborhood. You want to get a a photo, color photo flyer into their hands. And for the phone number, if you don't want to put your phone number on it, some people don't, you can take out a Google voice number. Mm -hmm. You can give them a friend's number, uh, a landline that nobody knows instead of your cell phone. There are lots of ways to do it. And one of the reasons that you might not want to give your phone number is that people in some places can be very cruel, calling in hoaxes, mm-hmm. calling in abusive. Why do you let your cat outside? Your cat would never have gotten outside if, or would never have gotten lost if you, you know, because as soon as yeah. they read that yeah, on or social send media, me money and we'll get your cat too. Oh, yeah. definitely. There's so many scammers. <laughs> or send me money. Oh, so, yes. Down, yeah. yeah well, I've got your cat right here. I promise. <laughs> um, so, and in that vein, your color photo should not your color photos, whatever you put out there should not include every distinguishing mark. Don't describe Mm. every distinguishing mark. We also tell people don't necessarily put the name or description, like don't say calico because not everyone knows that calico is different from tortoiseshell, for instance, or even knows what calico is. So just, you can say black cat or orange cat or just cat, but the photo is really what's going to do the work. Then once you've done that initial force multiplication, you want to get posters up. This is a piece that a lot of people resist because it is more work than just printing some flyers off your home printer or your work printer or whatever. Posters, we're talking about the kind of 22 by 28 neon Mm. colored poster board that you buy in an office supply store at the last minute for your kid's poster session at school, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. You want those neon colors. You want maybe different colors for different places. And I can send you a website or a a URL to put up that will show you just what these posters look like. I wish I had thought to. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, It's um, but basically you want the same kind of information, color photo, phone number. That's it. Mm -hmm. Um, If you need to put, don't call, don't approach. That's great, but keep it simple. The purpose of these posters is that they're going to go at intersections All through that radius, your 17 house radius is about what we say for an outdoor access cat. So three to five for an indoor only 17 house radius ish for an outdoor access. You're going to go at every intersection in that radius, starting with the most because it's going to take a while to make these and post them, you know, canvassing just takes time and energy. And if I may add to, yes. please mm-hmm. also make sure you're updating status wherever you are posting. So if it's online, Absolutely. make sure you're putting updates. If you're putting physical mm-hmm. posters, when you guys are reunited, kindly go around and remove Take them, them so it's not littered. Because yes. yeah. people still look. Like if I see a sign, I, yes, I'm looking. Yes, they do. That's the, yeah, and yes. people like to know. 
People mm-hmm. like to know that the cat was found because people get invested in other people's right. pets on social media, especially. So posters are the next thing. You're going to put them in all those intersections. If there are intersections, major intersections around the na- that radius, put them there. Churches, gas stations, places where there are populations of people, pizza parlors. There are a lot of other ways you could do signage. But those two, the flyers and the posters, are two most important ones. The idea with the posters is that someone in a car will be able to notice, see them, at, I mean, in theory, they can they can process that at 55 miles an hour. So if you you know if you keep it just the photo and the phone number, mm-hmm. so a passenger can write down the phone number or they can remember. Oh, I saw that. Ca- I wonder whether you and know they can and they go, back go back to get check. the info. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. So the posters are super important, and because they are also so large and colorful and unusual, they get noticed much better. There's this process. There's this concept called inattention blindness, where you see so many posters, especially in college towns or coffee shops. There's so many flyers. There's all like letter size, most of them on white paper. And you just don't really pay attention to the pet posters because as you said, a lot of people don't take them down. So you just don't, you figure out oh, that cat's been, you know, missing for forever. The other well, Mitch, thing is- I'm- Oh, oh, I'm sorry. oh, go ahead. One more thing. And then I wanted to ask you a question. Okay. I was going to say, I wouldn't necessarily put location and date that they went missing. Date, if it gets to be a long time, can be a sympathy getter and that gets the viewer more invested. But putting the location, you don't want to put anything on there that's going to lead someone to dismiss their sighting. If I see an orange cat mm-hmm. and it was found in you know, that neighborhood, oh, this is too far. It can't be the same cat. And then they don't call it in. That's good and advice. Right. Too. So, so what I wanted to ask you is, do you actually have a business where you help people with this? I don't, but um, okay. a lot of people do. They're, so the training okay. that I went through is through an organization called Missing Animal Response Network, which is okay. led by Kat Albrecht, who was kind of a pioneer in this field. She started as a canine officer with a bloodhound doing human search and rescue and fugitive searches and things like that. And she taught her dogs to do pet searches this is like in the nineties. So, um, there are lots of people in who are graduates of that same program who do it for a living, who have dogs that do tracking. Um, some of them have, you know, drones and thermal instruments and all kinds of things. I do. That's that's a vote for a team dog there. So we'll give dogs a point there for helping find lost cats. I do want to say this. I do have to say this because this was hilarious. I wish I'd got it on video. So Kushi has been playing a little bit with Max. Max is not on the wall behind me. I have to get a picture of him. Yes, but Kushi, Kushi, yeah, Kushi walked. Across, well, I have a ton of pictures, just not on the wall. Um, you should see my phone. Although I can't beat Danielle with the number of cat pictures on the phone. But uh-huh. anyway, Kushi walked along the floor in the family room for, I don't know, like three or four feet. And then Max came behind him and was like smelling his trail. And my daughter was there. She's like, why is Max smelling Kushi's trail across the floor? I was like, I have no idea. Cats can do scent work. I just yeah. saw an ad for a workshop about that, about teaching your cat to do scent work. And I was like, that would be super cool because a cat, well, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. No, I'm no, done. It's cool. Okay, Keep going. I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> no, um, it is. So one of the neat things about dogs is seeing all the different, any breed can do this. I've Got, I, if I have a podcast called Missing Pets, No Place Like Home. And okay. on that podcast, I've interviewed some of the folks who do this kind of tracking work. And uh, I've got people who've trained, you know, little rat terriers, German shepherds, bloodhounds, pit bull mixes, every kind of dog. But one of the things that's neat about the smaller dogs, the rat terriers, for instance, is that they're cat size. So when like we were to get into those areas, yes, they can climb under the, the gate or fence that the cat went through or whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's, it's a really interesting field and there are people who make their living. We need more actually, if there are any, um, cat lovers who also have dogs, or, you know, somebody who has dogs who love cats, that would be a great way to enrich their lives and save the lives of a lot of cats. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. Where are you located? But I'm just... in Vermont. I oh. just moved here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. where uh, I did a lot of the, a lot of this work before I left. But um, just kind of starting to get into it here. But, but are there people yeah. all over the country doing it? Like, is there a website for it or anything? Yes, I will send you a URL for um, that network, which has a 
pet detective directory. There are other people who didn't go through the same training who have, you know, other training and experiences. Just, just do it. Yeah. I'm thinking like have. for rescue trappers, probably yes. I've had people reach out asking for help for those things. Yes. And there are networks like here in Vermont there. Um, and we're right next to New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of groups that do canine recovery specifically rather than cats. Mm -hmm. And they, um, they, as far as I know, don't have anyone who went through the program that I went through, but they're very good at what they do. And have basically the same approach so yeah. um, and as you guys can see like there's a lot involved but it, it's really it's not but there is like there's there's certain things to do it sounds like yes. um you know getting yourself prioritized not doing all of the things but like focusing yes. on the things that you know are going to help I'm thinking maybe with the time that we have remaining yes. what would you recommend that people do after you know they've exhausted the search and the hunt and people right. sending them pictures like how do they do they trap the cat do they leave their doors yeah. open we've already so, determined no litter box outside yeah. <laughs> so those first first things are force multiplication signs flyers the next piece is getting a camera a field camera or trail camera if you've got hunters around or security cameras, you can get them very inexpensively now. Get one pointed at the point last seen. So if the cat left oh. through your door on its usual trip out and didn't come back, put it on that door where they usually come in. There might be more than one place, but you want cameras on it so, and um, set up a little feeding station with some KFC. I no endorsement, but it smells good. <laughs> like um, I wouldn't eat lunch. Yet. Three chicken um, and get yourself a humane trap. Uh, I can send you some links to some mm -hmm. options there. And eventually, once you know where the cat is, you've got it on camera, you know that it's coming there, then you set your trap. And um, I can give anybody more information on how to train them to go into the trap if need be and all that stuff. So Right. Yeah, so train, sorry, there's a lot to cover. Wrong. That's how yeah, I train. Should, <laughs> yeah. We should tell people who chat to I do want to uh, this is so funny because I called my car mechanic who is this great guy and he had a dog and I never pictured him as a cat person in a million years, but where his garage is, his shop is, I guess he has a cat colony and he, I, when I called him, I'm like, I need to give you my credit card number. He's like, well, I'm feeding rotisserie chicken to my colony. <laughs> oh God, that's awesome. <laughs> That That'll so keep funny. them coming back. And so we had quite the conversation. So he, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, never for my cats, him that way. <laughs> yeah, for my cats, it would be turkey, like deli turkey meat. They're two, three of my cats are obsessed smelly. with it. Yeah, uh, and yeah. the others want nothing to do with it. It's yeah, so funny. Yeah. And you, we yeah. also use sardines and mackerels and mackerel juice, and you can chum oh, yeah. the area with a spray solution of all these things to bring them closer. But mm -hmm. yeah, there's. It's a 10 week class I took and then wow. plus, you know, like more stuff. So I'm working on getting some of it documented on my website, but right now it's just the podcast so, and me. So <laughs> Okay. So people can go to your website. Yes. What's the name of your website? It's no place like home, all word, all one word dot show s h o w. And then they, can they contact you? Like if they're at their wits end and yes. Um, it's, and Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. My email address is N P L H Mitch. N is in no, he is in place. L is in like oh. H is in home, Mitch, M I T C H at gmail.com. I'm also on Facebook under the same N P L H Mitch and um, be happy to talk to anybody who needs help and help them hook up with a uh, trailing dog, tracking dog, if that's uh, something that is appropriate for that situation. So, yeah. Wow, that's sweet of you. That is really nice. I'm a gem. Yes, you are. Because <laughs> it's such, a peach. People are so emotional. It's like Danielle said at the very beginning, she's like, no, it's yeah, not. Yeah, I'm like not calmly calling you. <laughs> no, you. nobody does. Oh, it's kitty. okay. But part yeah. of what I do is try to keep you focused on what's going to get your cat home. And, mm -hmm. yeah you know, catastrophizing the worst case scenario is not in that list. So right. thank you usually so at much. This yeah. Point, yeah. Thanks for being on. So thanks. usually at this point, I ask you what's something you're excited about, which you're welcome to answer. But I also with like the minute we have left, I would love to hear like, what's the coolest reunion story ever? Like yeah. something that like was bonkers or just like, oh my gosh. Um, well, you know, the, that case I mentioned with the cat in that one neighborhood was pretty amazing because it wasn't the owner's neighborhood. It wasn't my neighborhood. It was about 20 minutes from each of us. And we wow. were so lucky to find this 
homeowner who fed cats regularly outside, he actually had two, this was an orange tabby that was missing, and he had two he fed outside who were also orange tabbies, and he just knew them. And he let us come on his property every night, reset traps, reset the bait, reach them. We had raccoon distraction bait out in another part of the yard, um, cameras, tarps. I mean, you name it. He was just so great. And so I had a remote camera. I was watching the night that the cat went to the trap. And uh, as soon as the cat went in, I went zooming over there and I texted Rachel, the owner, and I said, we've got him. And she met me over there. But by the time we got there, the homeowner had already gotten the trap and put it on the, you know, he was in the process of putting it on the porch where it was covered because it was rainy and cold. And um, he was just, I would say, if you are ever in a situation where you can help an owner get their pet back, please do whatever you can. Because there are a lot of folks who just feel like they can't be bothered. It's right. an intrusion on my property. It's it can change someone's life. Truly. Right. Agreed. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And to tell you what I'm excited about on Friday, four days, not that I'm counting, we're bringing home two new kittens. I cannot ah, wait. So, that's yeah. what you said in black yeah. kittens, right? Yes. Yes. Yay. They're going to be named Bimo and Jake after Adventure Time characters. I'm Which jealous. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have one cat and two dogs, and I think they're just going to be a great little addition to the family. I love Excellent. it. Well, you'll have to come back and tell us about the journey of introducing them to your existing pets and any cool stuff they do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, any lessons definitely. learned, all that Absolutely. fun stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I would love to come back anytime. So, Well, we'd love to have you. Thanks, Thank Mitch. you. For sure. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you everybody so much for listening. We hope this topic was good for you. I feel like this is one that we should keep bringing up again and again mm -hmm. because- mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing more devastating than losing your pet and, you know, feeling kind of lost or chaos hitting you when you're trying to find yep. them to get them back home again. Make sure everybody is subscribed to our YouTube channel, the Jersey Podcasts podcast. Go to our website, listen on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening. Let's keep the conversation going. Give this podcast a rating so other cat lovers can find it. Connect with the Jersey Podcasts on social media or visit thejerseypodcats.com and leave a message sharing a story or question about cats. Thanks again for joining us and we'll catch you in the next episode.